Hello again, everyone. I'm Lee Berger, a professor in paleoanthropology at the University of the Witwatersrand here in Johannesburg, South Africa, and an explorer at large for the National Geographic Society. Today, I'm going to answer a few questions about the tooth that we announced last Friday from the newly discovered 105 site. For those who haven't followed this discovery, I encourage you to watch the previous videos on the Fossil Vault YouTube channel. But just to remind everyone, this is a tooth that has been recovered during preparation. The block that it came from was recovered from the 105 site in a place where I suspected the in situ mandibular fossil, that's the first fossil hominid that was discovered from the 105 site, actually came from. In picking up a block fairly at random, uh, we found very quickly during preparation, in fact just a day into preparation, that it did contain a fossil hominid. So here's the tooth. You can actually see it in the block. This is from the reverse side. So we're looking at a cross section of the roots. And when we prepared the tooth out, we saw the edge of the enamel and then of course, a beautifully preserved tooth, which actually released itself from the rock. One of the first questions that's coming up on social media is, how do you identify that this is a hominid tooth? Well, it's actually relatively easy. Hominid teeth don't look like really any other mammal tooth on the continent of Africa. They are bulbous. They tend to be oval and rounded in shape. The cusp patterning and form is very, very characteristic. We could see in the uh, first mandible, we could see in a broken edge that the tooth had very thickened enamel. And again, that's a characteristic of hominids that distinguish them uh, from all other primates. And so due to the number of cusp and its overall shape, we can see relatively easily that this tooth is a molar. That is that we can exclude premolars, we can exclude canines and incisors. But that leaves uh, six or 12 possible teeth that it could be. That is, it could be a lower right or left molar or a upper right or left molar and it could be a first second or third molar so how do we tell what tooth is this well based on my experience the shape of this tooth its elongation from mesial that is away from the midline towards the distal part of the tooth row is that of a lower molar upper molars tend to uh, be more rounded in their appearance than this particular tooth. Um, that's not everything to go on, but the general complexity and cuspal pattern combined with this elongation uh, gives me the, the strong feeling that this is a lower molar. But which molar is it? Luckily, there are some features on this tooth that give us some idea of which molar it is, because there are, of course, three. Could be an M1, an M2, or an M3. Importantly, these two worn areas, these flattened areas on the mesial, which is the front of the tooth, and the distal area on the back of the tooth are called interproximal wear facets. And they actually are made by a tooth rubbing against a tooth in front and a tooth in back. Now, that immediately tells us we can eliminate one molar. We can eliminate a third molar because in hominids and of course in humans there is no tooth there's not a fourth molar behind the third molar so there is no wear facet so that means that this is likely a second or first molar so given that we're hypothesizing this is a first or second molar which molar is it right or left side to start with well given that it has a flattened uh, part here and a rounded part on this side, I would suggest that that indicates that this is likely a left tooth as that rounded side tends to be buccal and that flattened side tends to be lingual. By the way, buccal means towards the cheek and lingual means towards the tongue. Now, as I examine the cuff shape and the general shape of the fissures, I would agree that it's probably safe to hypothesize that this is a left mandibular molar. So we're still left with, is this a left mandibular first or second molar? Well, let's 
first identify the cusp that we can see. Here is a protoconid. That's the cusp that's on the mesial buccal side of the tooth. And this is a metaconid on the mesiolingual side of the tooth. So let's move down the buccal side towards the distal part of the tooth. The next cusp that we would see would be the hypoconid followed by a smaller cusp, which is a hypoconulid. Now, here you can see an interesting extra cusp, at least one, maybe two. This would be at least a six cusp at the distal part of the tooth. As we move lingually, we can see the entoconid. And thus, the shape of this and the cusp position support very strongly that this is a second molar, not a first molar. Now, that is often harder to identify than you might think, but given overall size, all the morphology that I see, I'm going to hypothesize for the time being that this is a lower left mandibular second molar. We'll, of course, test that. We're going to test that using micro CT, looking at the enamel dentine junction, and other means of comparative analysis. But for the time being, that's the hypothesis that I'm going to work with. So remember, as we go along, these are just hypotheses that we will test. That's the way science works. But I wanted to share with you some of the thoughts that are going on as we look at each of these fossils as they come out and as we learn about this unknown species of hominid and its anatomy. Sometimes we're going to be, make mistakes. But in order for you to follow the process of science, um, I think you'll enjoy the idea of how we learn and build this species fossil by fossil as we hopefully make lots of discoveries over the next several weeks, months, and even years. Thank you for joining me again as we continue the ongoing 105 expedition here in South Africa from the Cradle of Humankind UNESCO World Heritage Site.